Hi, my name's Brody, and I take my hobbies way too seriously. So seriously, in fact, that I decided to make the world's skinniest pool table and play pool on it. I came up with this idea when doing one of my favorite drills, where the only thing that you do is take long, straight stop shots on the pool table, which in pool is deceptively hard because you have to hit the cue ball perfectly. Which is why I love this drill so much, because it helps with so many different aspects of the game of pool. It helps you develop your aim, pre-shot routine, having a loose grip on the cue, eyesight and vision center, Q-tip position and accuracy, pushing the cue forward in a straight line, timing, and staying down on the shot. If you want to improve your game, I highly recommend giving this drill a try. Now, if you don't aim exactly straight or don't hit the dead center of the cue ball and you create side spin or what pool players call English, the object ball and the cue ball will not travel on that same straight line after making contact. But if you shoot the cue ball at directly in the center on the x-axis, you can add top spin or bottom spin, you just can't add English, the ball will travel in a straight line going forward, and then when the cue ball hits the object ball head on, then the object ball will continue down that same perfectly straight path, and the cue ball will either stop where it's at, move forward if there was follow, or move backwards if there was drop, but it will still be on that straight line. Which means if you hit a perfectly straight shot, the rest of the table is completely unnecessary. The only thing that you need is a small amount of table, say something like the width of this piece of wood, for the cue ball and the object ball to travel on. So I've done this straight shot drill a lot, and I've gotten pretty good at it. But I wanted to see just how straight I could shoot the ball. So I wanted to build a balance beam for pool. So I got some felt, I got some wood, and I got a red solo cup for the pocket, because that's all I could find. All right, enough talk. Let's build this thing. This table is skinny. It's just over nine feet long, and it's just under one inch wide, which means it's wide enough for the cue ball to sit on, but just the smallest little imperfection, and it falls off. So now, it's time to attempt the scariest eight ball shot of my entire pool career. I honestly can't believe I got that close on attempt number one. Now, because the table was so skinny and there was a very slight warp in the wood, making sure that the table was flat was key to preventing table roll and the ball falling off. We had to make multiple adjustments to the leg heights throughout the shot attempts because the ball kept falling off to the left. You see? It went to the left. And again. And I think a lot of these miss shots are more due to my carpentry skills, or lack thereof, as opposed to my pool skills. Not saying I never made errors in my pool shots and strokes, I definitely did. But I mean, come on, it consistently falls to the left? Seems like some table roll. However, I would say the biggest issue throughout this wasn't so much the levelness of the table, it was the pocket. Because... Well... The eight ball made it all the way across to the table, into the pocket, hit the end of the pocket, and bounced out. This happened way too many times. I actually put a small towel on the back of the pocket to help reduce the amount of bounce that the ball would get when it hits the end of the pocket. And did that work? Nope, not really. What is this? What is this? That is fucking wild. That, that seems like that should have been two. That should have been two. I... Oh. 
See? It happened again. And literally, my next shot. Yes! I don't care that I don't care that I scratch. I do not care that I scratch. Yes! I made the eight, but the cue ball fell off. So I changed up the eight ball position to see if it would be easier with a long distance to make the eight ball and make the cue ball stop on the table. And it was actually surprisingly pretty easy to make the cue ball travel the entire length of the table. However, after making contact with the eight, it just had too much momentum to stop and stay standing on such a thin table. So I had to change up my approach. So I thought to make it easier to keep the cue ball on the table, I'll put the cue ball and the eight ball real close together. And I was able to get the cue ball to stop. I just had to hit the eight perfectly to get it all the way down the table. Or I could just blame it on table roll. Now, I was going for a stop shot, but the table had new cloth on it, so it was really slick, and it made doing draw shots way too easy, and I was getting a little bit frustrated and emotional, so I was hitting the cue ball harder than I needed to, which is why you see the cue ball moving backwards after making contact with the eight on each attempt. Besides the table, though, one of the other challenges that kept popping up throughout this attempt was actually looking at the eight ball. The table was so skinny that it kept playing tricks on my eyes. Because when getting down and aiming, uh, between the cue ball and the eight ball, sometimes it looked like the little strip of table was sitting a little bit to the right. And then after the eight ball to the pocket, it looked like the table was on the left of the eight ball, making me doubt my aim and making it a little bit harder than it needed to be to hit this ball straight. At this point, I didn't think I was ever going to be able to get the cue ball to stop on the table and make the eight ball in the pocket. And then, this happened. Oh, that counts! That counts. Yeah, the cue ball stopped on the table, the eight ball made it all the way across, but it popped out of the faulty pocket. Unfortunately, even though we didn't capture it on camera, I had to count that because of time constraints. And I didn't think I was ever going to get it. And then, as soon as I started, shooting some B-roll footage, this happened. I did it! No Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> yes, you didn't see that, but it went in! I know. <laughs> Literally, as soon as we packed up the camera to take the full table footage, I made the eight ball and the cue ball stopped on the table. And we didn't get it captured on film. Well, we only captured half of it, the cue ball stopping on the table and the celebration. But you didn't see the eight ball going to the cup. So like, did it even happen? Honestly, if you choose not to believe it went in, that's fine, I get it. There is no video proof. But that is a genuine celebration, and I'm not an actor, or a good actor at that, and you can hear the eight ball hit the bottom of the cup. So, if you choose to believe it went in, I saw it myself, and so did my cameraman, as a, he was a witness. So there is a reason to believe that it actually happened. I guess, whatever you believe, that is what happened. I set out on this project just to capture pool balls traveling all the way across a skinny table. And we accidentally captured something even cooler. Schrodinger's 8-Ball. So, what do you believe?
Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.